when Tchaikovsky came to writing this, he, he kind of thought about ballet school in a slightly different way to the way his, um, his predecessors had. They wrote ballet schools just as a string of dances. There were lots of pretty girls. The Tsar sat there. He loved it. It was great. But Tchaikovsky sort of thought, well, why can't it be as complicated or complex, rather, as a symphony or an opera, both of which Tchaikovsky had written a lot of when he got to writing Swan Lake. And so he creates a lot of contrasts in the score to help us um, kind of give, give, well, help, help give the story its dramatic tension. There's the big party atmosphere in the forest at the beginning, lots of symbols and triangles and drums and things really kind of geeing up the score. And then that, that midnight scene um, by the lake has a very kind of eerie, shivering sound. Um, and the greatest contrast, of course, is between uh, the white and the black. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain how Tchaikovsky does that. But the thing you really need to kind of latch on to in Swan Lake, and I was thinking about this with Dallas back on the TV, is that you need a really good theme tune. Um, and, and Tchaikovsky gives us a real cracking theme tune in Swan Lake. And um, if you miss it the first time in Swan Lake, you're lucky, because it's repeated about 50 times over the course of the <laughs> evening. And the first time it sounds is when Siegfried's friend Benno spots the um, flock of swans in the sky at the end of Act One. And then, just in case you weren't listening, Tchaikovsky repeats it immediately again at the beginning of Act Two. This lone voice in the orchestra is played by an oboe. <laughs> like a human voice, the oboe. It's got that very, what we might call a plangent sound, very open, warm sound. Tchaikovsky tells us, in fact, that Siegfried is a little more emotional than he lets, uh, lets on, because right at the beginning of the ballet, we're kind of introduced to that swan theme, but in a different way. Swan theme in mirror image. So Odette's theme goes up, but this music that introduces Siegfried's party out in the forest goes down. When you sort of see things in mirrors and you think of things like Snow White and there's a, there are mirrors in lots of different stories, they're normally showing you what you most desire. And that's what Tchaikovsky is setting up right at the beginning. And he's also saying um, something very important about the structure of the ballet. And also, here we go, this is when it gets complicated, so everyone brace yourselves. The key, the key in which he writes um, this ballet, and it's, it's called B minor. Now, minor, which is that what we hear that beginning section in, is it tends to be, now this isn't always the case, but it tends to sound a bit sad. And major things tend to sound a bit happy. Well, for Swan Lake, luckily we can stick to that rule because that's basically what Tchaikovsky does throughout the ballet. We move slowly from the minor at the beginning to the major at the end. So what happens then when the girl who looks like Odette turns up at the in the party in Act 3? Do we think she's going to have the same theme? There's some new things that Tchaikovsky has put in here. So we get this new little motif. This is what we call a little snippet of music. Motif here, which goes. And we get this rather nasty descending, um, descending scale at the beginning, which doesn't sound very pretty at all. And there are loads of drums and cymbals and things, very unlike that music that we heard um, when we saw Odette at the Lake. He's telling us musically that things 
are not settled. So how are we going to settle them? How are we going to get back to our home key of, what was that first key called? B minor. B minor, quite excellent. Well, it, there, there's a long way to go, and actually Tchaikovsky avoids B minor, that key that we heard so many times in Act 1 and 2. He avoids it all the way through Act 4 until we get to the real struggle between von Rothbart, um, Odette, and Siegfried. <laughs> is Odette's music we're hearing, and you hear that real struggle, and slowly but surely, Odette and Siegfried state their love. Odette decides that she's going to go and throw herself in the lake, and Siegfried follows her where they will break the spell. And this is how Tchaikovsky breaks the musical spell. Tchaikovsky turns B minor, that music which is rather sad, indicative of Odette and Siegfried's longing, he turns it to B major. So when you go to Swan Lake, you'll be absolutely dazzled by the costumes and dazzled by the scenery and certainly overwhelmed by the amazing dancing. But underneath all of it, Tchaikovsky's also telling you the story. And if you listen really hard, you'll hear that journey from Siegfried's longing to his happiness in the ever after with Odette at the end. Thank you.